Hello, my friends from Rec Class, ninjas and bigger, stronger, faster kids. Uh, Coach Mark here. We are going to be outside today uh, as long as the weather holds up. Beautiful day. Uh, a little bit sunny. I'm going to wear a hat today to protect those eyes so I can see better. Uh, we have a lot of things in store. We're going to do a warm-up. We're going to do a, a plank progression. I'll probably have a guest for that one, uh, Isaac, who we've seen before. Uh, we're going to do an isometric thing. I am not looking forward to that one, but it should be pretty good. Uh, we're going to do a lunge series. That will also be a good one. We're going to do, uh, we're going to work with an exercise ball. And we're going to do a couple just kind of uh, movement uh, tests, little dynamic movement tests, and we'll see if we can do those. And then we'll finish with a cool down. So we're going to start with a warm-up. Uh, warm-ups are very important. Uh, warm-ups are ways we can address uh, areas of the body that we might not normally, you know, concentrate on in our workouts and our exercises, uh, areas like the feet and the ankles, which are really important. And I like using the warm ups. You can kind of get a lot of feedback from your body to see if there's something that we can focus a little bit more on during that session. So we'll start at the feet. I'm going to stand. My toes are going to be going forward. We're going to go side to side. So I'm putting pressure on the outside. I'm rolling to the outsides of my shoes. I don't want to turn my ankles. I'm not going to go extreme on that, but I'm just going to roll my feet in and out, kind of feel that the way the muscles and the arches work with the ground. So I'm going to do that about seven times. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to alternate between going on my heels and on my toes. Okay. I want to get up as high into my toes as I can. And up high onto my, get my toes off the ground as far as I can when I get on my heels. Okay. I'm going to now integrate some shoulders in with this one. So I'm going to raise one arm. I'm going to keep my thumb up. And I'm going to reach back as far as I can. Now with my other arm, so when I do this, I'm externally rotating that shoulder and flexing that shoulder. This other one, I'm going to do the opposite. <clears throat> I'm extending this arm. I'm going to put my thumbs down. So now I'm internally in the shoulder. And I'm going to reach back as far as I can. And I'm going to go back and forth. Okay. And now let's go right back to that heels and toes. Okay. Up on the heels. Up on the toes. As we're raising those arms. I'm going to try to keep my elbow straight. It's kind of hard to keep that balance and get way up on those heels. All right. So now we're going to go across the body. That was a great thing to go across the middle of the body. I'm alternating which arm is on top. And also, I'm, when my hands are out of weight, I'm going to have palms up. When I cross my body, I'm going to do palms down. Okay? Right across the body. All right. Uh, next, we'll kind of get move up the body a little bit into the legs a little bit more. We're going to do some knee hugs. Gonna grab a knee, I'm gonna pull up. Normally I like to pull up so high I get up onto my toes. A little bit tricky for me today. I am very sore. I did two days ago, I was doing isometric holds on a rear foot elevated squat, and I am extremely sore. So if you've heard that saying, you're moving slower than my grandma. I don't think there's a single grandma I could move faster than today. I'm that sore, like a nine plus out of 10 sore. Uh, but that's okay. That's how we need to challenge ourselves in order to get better. And you never want to be that sore, but uh, you know, there's growth that comes with challenging yourself. So uh, after that knee hugs, I'm just going to raise my knees up as high as I can without the assist from the hand. Normally, I'd probably like to do a, a high knee jog, but again, I got that excuse. My backside is so sore, that would hurt. All right, I'm gonna grab my ankle. I don't wanna grab my toe and pull my toes. I'm gonna reach back, grab my ankle, just a gentle pull. Front side, a little sore too. Not as sore as that back side. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things we're gonna do today is is isometrics. So I'm going to do that exact same hold that I did earlier that made me this sore. And it's either a 
good idea because sometimes when you do the thing that made you sore, you know, it just kind of makes things a little bit uh, uh, better. You know, you're working those muscles and moving blood and, and lymph and all those things through and it improves it or it could be a very bad idea. I might get more sore. So we'll find out. I'm kind of excited. I'm getting challenging myself a little bit. So now I did a couple of those where I'm grabbing the ankle, pulling back towards my backside. Now I'm going to go without the assist on my hands and I'm just going to reach back. I'm going to try to kick my backside. All right, gonna get those feet wide, and I'm gonna do, uh, we used to call them windmills in, when I was in school, but I'm just going to reach and touch as far as I can outside my opposite toe, okay? So I wanna keep my hips low, and I'm gonna shift back and forth, okay? Now, I wanna keep my hips low. If my hips go up in order to touch the ground, I have to bend over more at the waist. And if our back is strong, that's probably not going to hurt us. It's not really great for the back to be spending a lot of time in a bent over position. All right. Uh, next from here, I'm going to do a couple with this wide split stance. I'm going to do a couple where I'm going to reach back and raise my arms. Just like I'm picking up something off the ground and throwing it behind my head. I do that about five times. All right, so now I'm gonna split my stance. I'm gonna have one foot, about a whole uh, length of a foot ahead of my, my back foot. So my left foot forward, my right leg is back. I'm gonna reach behind me on my right side and I'm going to throw an imaginary object, like a bucket of water behind my shoulder on my left side. Looks a little like a golf swing. Okay, I'm getting a little rotation around the shoulders and the hips. Okay, we're kind of integrating a lot of parts. My ankles are moving, my knees are moving, my hips are moving, my elbows are moving, my shoulders are moving, a lot of stuff moving. All right, gonna do the same. If you do one side, you probably should do that other side too. Reaching behind the hips, throwing an object, imaginary object behind my back. Now, warm-ups, again, Think of wonderful, kind of gets the blood moving. Purpose of a warm up is to kind of get blood moving, get joints ready for action, get muscles ready for action. When we do that, usually our muscle contractions are can be stronger. Uh, we recover faster, and our tissues uh, stretch better, so we're less likely to get hurt. You don't always have to have a plan to warm up. I'm just kind of making things up as we go along. Um, we are going to put those arms out, and I'm going to do just little twists. Okay. A little bit back and forth. Okay, I'm not turning very far. Just getting a little trunk work in. Not shifting as much on my feet or my hips this time. Okay, and now I'm just going to go up. Put a hand on the thigh and I'm reaching over my head. We're getting some, some movement on that lateral line of our body. Feels like my ribs are opening up. Feels pretty good actually. I'm going to do that about three times on each side. All right. Just a couple circles. Actually, I'll do one arm at a time. I'm gonna do about five of these. Go backwards five times. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. A lot of bird chirping out there. Put a frog a little bit ago. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, since I'm a little bit sore, I'm gonna do a little extra work around my hips. So I'm going to do some gatekeepers. So I'm lifting up, out, in. So it's kind of like a march there. Huh? Sometimes you lose your, lose your balance. Sometimes during the warm-up, you find that one side feels tighter than the other. <clears throat> it's good to find those things out. You can address those things. Get a couple extra reps. Sometimes you have a plan during the workout. During your warm-up, you feel... You better change your plans. This might be so tight or sore. All right, uh, finally, I'm gonna do big reverse hurdle steps. Watch to work on the hips. About five each. All right, I warmed up, feel nice and warm. 
Got a little bit of sweat going. I am ready for action. All right, my friends from class. This is the time where we get to do some isometrics. A little bit dread in this moment. Uh, isometrics are just a, it's a hold. It's where our muscle stays in the same spot, the same length, and it burns a little bit. But isometrics are very good for us. It actually puts more tension on the muscle than a regular like bicep curl. If we were holding it, our muscles actually work harder than if we were going through a range of motion. Um, yeah, but they're, and they make you mentally tough too. They are toughies. So I'm going to do three things. I'm going to do a, that one-legged squat with the back foot on the bench, rear foot elevated squat. Uh, that's what made me so sore a couple days ago. And I'm going to do one minute holds on both sides. I'm going to do a push up hold at the bottom. So I'm going to work my shoulders and my pectoral muscles and my triceps on that one. Going to work a lot of core on that one too. And I'm going to do a, uh, a pull up hang. Uh, that one's going to work my back. So, so we kind of got the whole body, you know, the three big parts of the body, big push and pull and big leg thing with those three things. So right now I have a bench. This is the same bench that made me so sore that other day. Uh, a chair would work. If you use a chair with that hard top, you probably want to take like a mat, a pillow, a small pillow or a small towel, fold it up and put it on the chair underneath your foot. Uh, that'll just make it a little bit more comfortable. So on this one, I'm going to have one foot out front of me. I'm just going to pick my left leg. I'm going to put my back foot on the bench. Now, when my, with my back foot, I want my toes to be straight, uh, pointing straight out, okay? Sometimes when you put your back foot on the bench, people will start with their, with their toes up like this on top of it. That gets uncomfortable after a while. It's kind of better to have your whole foot flat on the top of that bench or chair. Uh, you just spread out the pressure on that foot. It feels a lot better. Uh, now, with my front leg, the leg that's working, I'm going to drop down to the bottom of a kind of a squat, a lunge, okay, where my thighs can be about even with the ground, parallel to the ground, and that's where uh, it is the most difficult for us on a squat or a lunge, is that very bottom part, just because of the way the, the angles are, uh, of the joints are, you know, we, have, we don't have great leverage from that spot, so it's a great place to work on to get stronger in there, because once, it's like a chain. You're as strong as the weakest link of the chain. If you strengthen the weakest link of the chain, the whole chain is stronger. So all right, so I'm going to start with my left leg forward. So you can pause this video. So grab yourself a chair or a bench or even the top of a, of a couch could work. <clears throat> I'm going to put that one leg back on that bench. I'm going to drop down. Now there's a couple different positions we can do this. Um, this is where we have... Number one is where we have a straight up and down chin and a very upright torso. My back is very straight. Now that puts a lot of stretch on that back leg. And since it's a hold, I really don't want to do that. I'm going to have a, a little bit more of a, a lean forward. And it's not a severe lean forward, just a little bit where I'm going to lean forward. And that's also going to make my shin kind of angle forward a little bit too. Now when we play sports, shin angle is very important. Every time you accelerate, you know, your shins drop down, angle towards the ground. And so it's really important to be fast in those short distances. So uh, this really has great transfer to anytime you gotta take out fast or stop, you know, that shin angle strength. So I'm gonna set my foot down. I'm gonna have my back foot on the bench. I'm gonna get my timer out. It'd be a shame if I got down in this and started and didn't have a timer on. Okay, got my stopwatch ready. I'm going to drop down. Okay, got that little forward lean. I'm going to start right there. Okay, so with my hands, got to do something with my hands. I'm going to put them lightly on my front leg since it's such a long hold. Now, sometimes people push against that leg. It just kind of takes a little bit of pressure off that leg. I'm going to try not to do that. I should always be able to move my fingers lightly. I'm about one third done. <clears throat> so far, so good. So it's not the best thing. It's not just hang out at the bottom. I'm actually pushing hard into the ground with this front leg. I can feel like the back of my leg, my hamstrings. I can feel my glutes working really hard. 
I feel a little bit of a stretch on this back leg. Stretches are good for us. We don't want to crank on that. Definitely a lot of work. We're still hanging in there. 10 more seconds. Five more seconds. And three, and two, and one. Woo! All right, very good. Well, actually, it's not as sore as the other side right now. I feel that, like it worked a lot, and it did. It worked a lot. Not as sore as the other side. So hopefully my experiment worked by doing this to relieve some of the soreness. However, maybe tomorrow I'll think this was all a very bad idea. All right, I'm going to go right into this next one. This time my right foot's on the ground. I'm going to reach back behind me with my left foot. I'm going to put the top of my foot onto that bench. Okay, I'm going to get my stopwatch ready. All right, I'm going to drop down. Perfect. Starting my watch. My thigh is parallel to the ground. I have a little bit of a shin angle right there. My knee and my toe are pretty much in alignment. So one thing I like to use, like whenever you're doing free squats or lunges, just imagine if you had a two by four right in front of your toe, you might be able to touch it with that front knee. You shouldn't knock it over. If I put my knee way out in front, it's putting a little bit more stress on that front leg on that knee. All right, if you're still hanging in there, we're halfway done. Once again, I'm not going to push down too hard on that with my hands on my leg to, to make it easier. I'm still pushing hard into the ground, okay? 15 more seconds. So we're three, if we're talking quarters, like football game, uh, we are fourth quarter right now. Doing pretty good. 10 more seconds. Five seconds. Three, two, and one. All right, that went pretty well. Ooh, I feel those muscles nice and tight overall. It went better than I expected. Got my heart rate up, that's a good thing too. All right, next thing we're gonna do is do that push-up hold. So right now, I brought over a couple push-up handles, okay? Now these push-up handles get you further away from the ground so you can go through a, a longer range of motion. It also helps because you can have them this way, you can keep those wrists a little bit more neutral compared to a standard push-up where our hands would be, our fingers would be facing out. Just makes it a little bit easier on the wrist. You don't have to use these. If you don't have them, it's just fine. I just like to use them mostly for that increased range of motion. Gonna move some of those pine cones. All right. So again, a normal push-up. Uh, if you don't have push-up handles, fingers point straight out, okay? You want to have your upper arm to be not all the way in. That's called a tuck. And you don't want all the way out. That's kind of hard on the shoulders. You want it somewhere almost in between, almost in between. So if I was going to go more towards one way, I'd rather be tucked in tight. It's going to work a little bit more triceps than have those elbows flaring out, okay? So I'm going to hold a little bit of a, a slight tuck, but my arms are out a little bit. I'm going to squeeze my backside because uh, that's the strongest muscle in our body. When that's tight, our whole body's, whole body's tighter. And when I squeeze the glutes, I don't even have to think about squeezing my abs and core because it will naturally follow suit with the glutes. And yeah, I'll just stick my toes into the ground. Now for balance sake, you can move those feet a little wider to increase that kind of base of support. Uh, I'm going to try to keep my feet in curl still on this one. And once again, we're going to use one minute. Um, I know people that have gone well over a minute on this one. Like on this one, I like to try to get five minutes on that when I decide to do these, uh, these holds. Uh, very uncomfortable. But uh, we, we're just going to stick with one minute today. So I'm going to get my stopwatch ready. So if you're ready, we are going to start in three, two, one. One. Just gonna hold this position right there. Okay, squeezing the glutes. I've dropped down to pretty much the bottom of a push-up. We're talking quarters. Like a football game. We just finished the first quarter. One third done. We've made it halfway point. 
got about 25 seconds left, still staying tight. Feel that core working. My arms are doing pretty good. I mean, they're working. They're kind of like twitching a little bit. 10 more seconds. Five seconds. There we go, we made that one. Well, I feel a lot of work on that chest, some work on the shoulders, a lot of work on those arms. All right, that was kind of fun, that was a good one. Now this last one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna choose to do a, a pull-up version there, right on this tree. Uh, now one of the main reasons I'm gonna do it here, this is a pretty big branch. I'm gonna get some good hand work on that one. So. I mean, that branch, I'm not even come close to being able to get my hands all the way around that branch. Normal pull-up bar, you easily can get your hands around a full pull-up bar. So the bigger the, the bar, or in this case branch that you're holding, the more the hands have to squeeze. So if you're deciding to, if you get to monkey bars or if you have a, one of those pull-up bars you can hang up in your doorway at home, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is my arms are gonna be straight. Now, I'm not gonna have them all the way straight where I'm just hanging there. If you're just hanging there, your hands get to work out, but you're mostly getting a stretch, okay? I'm gonna hold on to that thing. I'm gonna keep my arms straight, but I'm going to shrug my shoulder. So I'm gonna take these shoulder blades, okay? And I'm gonna try to engage them. I'm gonna squeeze them together, and I'm just gonna hold from that position. Now, if you don't have a pull-up bar at home, uh, don't have uh, uh, monkey bars anywhere close, like a playground, you can take, I've done this before, where you can take a chair and put a broomstick. I'm 200 pounds and, and it holds me up. You just put the broomstick on top of the chairs, probably have a parent make sure it's, it's you know, strong enough, it's going to hold you up. And then you can pull yourself up like a row. Now, on this one, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep my arms straight. But if you're doing that row version, you walk your feet out, you can even bend your knees, it makes it a little easier. You're not moving that weight of that lowest part of your leg. You can bend those knees a little bit, squeeze your glutes, keep your back straight, and then pull yourself to that halfway point because that's about that sticking point on a normal row. I'm doing the pull-up version though. So you can freeze this video if you can set up your own uh, row station or if you have that pull-up bar like my boys have in their rooms, a little pull-up bar right by the door frame, you can grab that too. So I'm gonna use a minute on this one. My hands are gonna get a heck of a workout. It's a real big branch I'm grabbing on to. Gonna step on this bench. Okay, I'm gonna start in three, two, one. Okay, I'm pulling up on my shoulder blades. So I'm not going to let my arms drop down like that. i got to keep them pulled the whole time. Ooh, my hands are working. Okay, I'm one-third done. This is harder than the push-up. About as hard as that one-legged squat was. I'm really getting the shakes there. Got about 20 more seconds. Fifteen seconds. Five seconds. All right, went a little over a minute. Oh. That was a lot of work on the forearms, a lot of work on the hands. Hands are all squooshed up, wrinkly like a prune. <clears throat> Good work on that core. These things, that's what, what I was trying to gauge when I was squeezing those shoulder blades together. A lot of work on those lats. Wouldn't be surprised if I'm a little sore from that tomorrow. All right, if you did all these, awesome job. I'm impressed. It is now time for us to get a lunge series in. All kinds of different lunge things and lunge progressions you can do. We're gonna do a clock lunge today. So that's gonna entail a forward lunge, kind of diagonal lunge, kind of a diagonal back lunge, a reverse lunge, 
and then yeah another diagonal back and diagonals forward and a forward lunge so if you it's called a clock uh, lunge series for a reason so if you think about a clock our first step out is going to be 12 o'clock which would be right there then I'm gonna go right around that you know in between 1 and 2 o'clock which is kind of that diagonal line away then I'm gonna go right to 3 o'clock which is our side lunge okay that diagonal back which is gonna be kind of around that 5 and then straight back to that 6 that diagonal back around that 7 or the 8 somewhere in there side lunge which is gonna be our 9 Diagonal forward is going to be somewhere between that 10 and the 11, and then we finish with a 12 o'clock with the other leg. So we go all the way around the clock. So just a good way to visualize it. Now when we get when we do a lunge, there is a ideal step rate. You might have to do a, a couple practice reps if you take too short of a step. What generally happens if you try to get to the bottom lunge, my knee is way out in front of my toe, okay? And if you don't have good mobility of the ankles, that's gonna be very stressful on that knee. Um, if you take a very long step, you know, if it's too long of a step, it's kind of awkward, you know, and it does put a, like a, a really deep stretch into that back leg, that hip flexor on that one, probably not ideal. So we have to do that perfect length. So, when we take that perfect length, just a slight knee forward, but I used this illustration earlier when we did that isometric hold. I envision a two by four standing on its end. My knee might touch that two by four, but it's not gonna knock it over, okay? So that's about our ideal length on those lunges when we're moving forward. Now reverse lunge, that's like the perfect movement. When we reverse lunge, we're gonna have a little bit more of a straight knee up and down okay um i'm doing this on grass nice and soft if you're doing this at home inside carpet works pretty good just gotta be careful for hard ground like a wood floor we don't want to smoke that knee that back leg on the ground that's not pleasant so and we need a little bit of space too we don't want to knock over furniture we don't want to step on the cat's tail a lot of things we don't want to do so make sure you have you have good space uh and that you're ready to work. All right, so we're gonna go around that clock three times. So I'm going to start with my right leg because that's kind of the way that clock works, that clock wide circle. And I'm gonna work my way around until I get to my left leg. All right, so if you have your space picked out, you can do this one right ahead with me. We are gonna start with our right leg at that 12 o'clock. Three, two, one, there we go. Diagonal forward, there's my, we're gonna call that two, three o'clock, okay? On that lateral lunge, we put our weight over that traveling leg. Let's get this leg nice and straight. We get a great stretch on that. I'm gonna turn a little bit. Face my five o'clock, step back. Oh, there's that straight back reverse lunge. I gotta do it on both sides so it's all even. Stepping with my left leg at that seven o'clock, straight out at nine, once again, lateral lunge, put your weight over that traveling leg. The other leg is nice and straight. Over here at 11. And finally, 12. All right, we went through once. Two more trips. 12, two, three, no more pausing. Five, straight back, six, six, seven, nine, 11, 12. We've gone through twice, one more time around. 12, two, three, five, six o'clock, seven, nine, 11, 12. All right, that did not take long. Got my heart rate up, got a little sweat going, my legs feel great. All right, we'll see you at the next one. It is that time where we do where we usually do an agility exercise uh, that works on our, our legs, our feet, our ability to stop, our ability to change directions, our ability to start again. Uh, we're going to take tools such as these hurdles. Uh, back here I have a, a ladder 
And we're going to, instead of using our feet, like they're traditionally done, we're going to use our arms, OK? Um, I wouldn't call it starting, stopping, changing directions. We're going to load our hands up. Uh, man, our hands, great sensory organs, they give us a lot of feedback. And we're going to be using our arms and our, and our hands to do these agility drills. So we're going to do uh, some uh, hurdle climbs. Okay. Um, if you don't have hurdles at home, I can't imagine a lot of you would have something like this at home. You have siblings, use your siblings. Uh, you can use books, pillows, lots of stuff would work. As far as a ladder, uh, strings would work, jump ropes would work. Uh, the, if you have a tile floor, squares, you can just use those lines on the floor. Oh, sidewalk chalk. I love sidewalk chalk. So I'm going to use this for that. Uh, third thing we're going to use is a big uh, stability ball, such as this. Okay? Uh, I think most of you probably have something like this at home. Uh, if you don't, you should get one. These things are awesome. And um, if you don't have one, I've done what we're going to do with a basketball. This is really, really hard, but it can be done with a, a smaller ball than a stability ball. But we're going to try this on a stability ball. It's a great exercise. All right. So the first one we're going to do is the ladder. Okay. Um, I'm going to, a lot of different patterns that you normally use ladders and with the feet. I'm going to do in outs on the ladder, but oh, instead of just my feet on the ground, I'm going to have my hands on the ground too. So I'm probably going to work more arms and core than anything else. My legs will get a little bit of work, not a heck of a lot of work compared to my arms. So I'm going to start down here, kind of like a push-up position. Okay, I'm going to walk my hands into the first ladder, walk them out, in, out. Okay, all the way down the ladder. Another thing we can do with the ladder is do that same in out, but this time, instead of the feet trailing right behind you, have those feet wide. Then we kind of work those hips a little bit. So my feet are wide, they're going to be on the outsides of the ladder. Got to take a lot more short, choppy steps that way with the feet. In, in, out, out. All right. Hey, the next thing we're going to get to, oh, that was great work on those arms, uh, is our, our little barrier. Normally, they'd be a little hurdle hop. We're going to climb over them with our arms. So I'm going to start right over here. It's basically a push-up position. Hey, we could do push-ups here if we want to. I'm going to climb over. Climb over. Climb over. Okay? So we got to pick up that arm really high. With this other arm, we're loading it. It's a lot of work on that core because there's more weight on one side than the other. Okay? We can also climb around those. Okay. So I'm bear crawling in and out of those hurdles. Get good core work here. Loading those hands. Loading those feet. All right. That was great movement. All right, last one I'm going to do, I'm going to grab that stability ball. Usually, uh, we do exercises like core exercises. This is going to be a core exercise. But this time, hands are going to be on the ground and feet are on the ball. And I'm going to try to walk this ball, in this case, uphill. In this case, it's time for getting that lawn mode. Got to get the boys on that one. I'm going to start with that ball right over here, hands on the ground, feet on that ball. Okay, here's where we got to be good with the feet. I'm going to walk myself uphill, kind of like a wheelbarrow walk. And I'm going to pull the ball with me by moving my feet. You can also do this backwards too. Ooh, tricky going downhill backwards. Ah, there we go. Well, that was great core work there. All right, my friends, hope you give that a try.
Uh, I think you'll like it. It will be a great workout. We are going to do a core series like we usually do. I have Isaac here to help me today. He, actually I just brought him down and he has no idea what we're going to do. So now I'm going to spring it on him. We are going to do a plank, can you? So I'm going to pick a plank exercise I'm going to have Isaac do for just 30 seconds. I'm not that mean of a, of a dad and friend, whatever. And uh, Isaac's going to pick out a plank exercise for me, for me to try for 30 seconds. Now Isaac is a kinesiology student, so and he has been, so he knows a lot of exercise, and he's been a uh, lifter, he's a very strong kid. Isaac, how long have you been lifting weights? Since 8th grade. Since 8th grade, yeah. he's 20 now, so he's semi, seven years. yeah, 7 years. So, a big chunk of his life. And uh, yeah, he's really strong, so he comes in handy at home, he can pick up lots of stuff for me. Um, Alright, so... Isaac, poor Isaac, didn't know that this was happening, but uh, we are going to get started. So I'm going to start. I'm going to pick a plank exercise for Isaac, and I'm going to use this here bench. I brought this bench down. I, Isaac probably thought it was for him to sit on, but no such luck. We are going to do a reverse plank. I love reverse plank because normal plank where we're on our forearms and our toes, you know, it's an anti-flexion exercise. So our abdominals have to work hard to not fold in half. And this is the exact opposite, is a reverse plank. So we are going to work, instead of core, we'll get a little core, we're going to work backside. Strongest muscle in our body is that, that behind, that glute. And what I'm going to have Isaac do is, Isaac, walk your feet out a little bit, and you're going to put your, your forearms on the bench. Okay? Walk those feet out, keep those feet together. And now I want you to... Before you start, I'm going to get my stopwatch ready because I'm going to be true to my word about 30 seconds. Oh, there it is. All right, Isaac, I want you to have a nice straight line. I want you to bridge up and squeeze that backside. We are on the clock for 30 seconds. And then let's tilt that head back a little. It's nice straight. Not that far back. There you go. Isaac, can you feel those glutes working? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this is a very challenging exercise. So Isaac's lucky that I'm only picking 30 seconds. So hopefully he'll be as kind to me. I have no idea what he might be thinking of for a uh, plank exercise. I don't think he'll like me. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, Isaac, there's only five seconds left. So nice thoughts. Three, two, one. All right, Isaac, your 30 seconds are over. Mm -hmm. Now at home, you try that one. Do it just like Isaac did. He kept his feet together. Uh, I have this nice sturdy bench there uh, on a big couch, uh, a, a table chairs, something that's low, something that you can get in that position, something that's not going to tip over on you. Um, yeah, and then the big thing, squeeze that backside, that that booty as hard as you possibly can. All right, Isaac, you can run the stopwatch now. Uh, plank jacks. I don't know what that means. All right, that's where you can be in the plank position. You backed up a little bit, Isaac. Oh, my, my feet have to go back and forth like that? Yep. Am I, I just stay in a plank position? If you want to challenge yourself, you can do the... Well, oh my goodness. hands in it, too. All right. Isaac didn't see what I was just doing with that agility exercise with those hands. So I have an out on that one. Actually, that does look like fun. But 30 seconds of that, I don't know how much fun that's going to be. I'm going to start with those forearm on the ground. And my ear may not try my hand at putting my arms on the ground, extending my arms out. Isaac, you got that stopwatch ready? Yep. Hold on one second. I'll get a little bit more interview with that camera. You Put tell down. me when to go. Go. Get a lot of jumping on those toes. Yeah. One third of the way. Okay. Well, I feel my core working. Move my legs a lot. Get my heart rate up. Ten seconds. Five, three, two, one, one, one. Oh, you're done. Woo! All right. Well, that was a good one, Isaac. Now, if you're doing this at home, I got a hole in my shoe. So, I'm lucky I didn't get bugs crawling through there. Uh, anyway, that was a good one, Isaac. Yeah. All right. Hey, so Isaac's Mystery Plank Part 2. I can use the same bench. Oh, this is cruel. 
This one is going to be called a Copenhagen plant, plank. So I'm not sure. Isaac, do you know the Copenhagen plank? Yeah. Plank? Oh, perfect. It's kind of a side plank, but it's way, way harder. All right. So what I'm going to have Isaac do is kind of like a typical side plank. He's going to be on that elbow, just one arm. It's going to work his obliques. But we're going to add something much more challenging. In fact, Isaac, if you hold this for a second, and just so our friends from class can see at home, I'll give you the side profile. So Isaac's going to have his arm on this pad and his top knee. His leg can be bent down here. This top knee is going to be on top. And now I'm going to ask his bottom leg to squeeze the bottom of the bench. He's going to sandwich that bench. All right. Yep, perfect. Make sure that knee. Yep. Now, if you don't have that a bench at home, you can use a chair on this one too, or a table. Um, Isaac's already started the plank almost, but make sure that you have your knee on top of that. If Isaac doesn't have his knee, if his knee's over here and his shin is on there, that's a lot of stress that we're putting through that knee, an icky stress. So poor Isaac has to wait for me to get my stopwatch. There it is. All right, Isaac, show him a good Copenhagen plank. All right. So Isaac is stacking his shoulders just like that. He has his top knee on there. He squeezes his bottom leg. In order to squeeze that bottom leg, he has to work that inner thigh really, really hard. So he might notice that inner thigh more than he notices these obliques over here. He's doing a great job. Ten more seconds, Isaac. How you doing, bud? Good. Good. You make it look easy. Yep. I'm glad I picked this one out. If it was me over here, I'd be, I might have tears already. Two and one. Well done, Isaac. Now, I'm not going to make Isaac do the other side, too. But normally, if you do one side, you better do that other side, too. All right, Isaac. You're on the spot. Um, let's do a... You're down in the plank. Okay. One arm up. Uh, the leg up. So hold that for three seconds. Oh. Okay. Well, if you can't fully see what Isaac's got, he's doing kind of like a bird dog. Opposite arm, opposite leg. <clears throat> I'm going to move this bench. Do not need that anymore. Isaac's going to give you stopwatch function. Oops, you need me to do oh, all right. So, anyway, Isaac picked a dandy there. So, normal plank. We have four points of contact on the ground. We are going to take two of those points of contact out. So... We'll have an opposite arm, opposite leg in contact with the ground yet. Uh, it allows us to kind of get that, uh, the body works a lot on diagonal lines. We get that, it's called cross body stabilization. Uh, this is a very good exercise. Now, Isaac made it look really easy. I'm probably going to struggle a little bit, but thank goodness, 30 seconds. I think I can survive it at least. All right, Isaac, you tell me when, it's, when I'm ready. Ready, set, go. Can you tell me when to switch? Switch. Okay. Now, as much as I can, I'm going to keep my arms and legs straight. Switch. I like to have my thumb up. Keeps my arm switch. neutral. Switch. A little easier on the shoulders to do it that way. Switch. Woo, how close am I? Switch. One more. Ooh, that was challenging. Well done, Isaac. All right. Well, payback. Uh, we're going to do a body saw. Isaac's going to, I I should say, uh, we're not going to do it. Isaac's going to do it. So what I have here is called the slide board. Now, if you have siblings who are in hockey, you might have one of these at home. We don't have to have one of these. So if you have a wood floor at home, you can take a, uh, a dish towel, put your toes on that, that will work as good. If you have those furniture movers, those little, uh, little discs uh, that you use to slide furniture on carpet, those work fantastic. But <clears throat> I have the slide board, so we'll, we'll use it. Isaac, put these booties on your feet. So Isaac's gonna put the nylon booties on his feet Isaac is going to put his forearms 
on the pad, okay? And the booties are gonna be on the slide board. You don't know how this one works, Isaac? This is called a body saw. So what Isaac's gonna do, he's gonna get in a traditional plank position, but he's gonna use his arms to pull himself forward, push himself back. So I always like to think about the eyes. I want Isaac's eyes to go by his, uh, to go past his elbows, and then his eyes to go in front of his hands. Okay, Isaac, I'm gonna get my, do you want me like, yeah. No, that's a pike. I just showed you a pike right there. I'm not calling pike a plank uh, family member. You are going to stay in that, but you are going to slide. Exactly. Okay. It's a tricky one. It's a toughie. So anyway, so 30 seconds normally, is you can survive most planks for 30 seconds. This is a hard one. I usually give people numbers. So like 20 is usually my top number to do on this one. We're going to put Isaac on the clock for time because he's going to do his slow and controlled. Like everything in life, we should always be under control. So I'd rather have eyes do really good repetitions and maybe only get 10 than do really short, bad ones, crappy ones, and get like 23. So eyes going to work slow and controlled. I want his butt to stay, his backside, his booty to stay at the same level. I don't want to rise up and down like that pike. And yeah, brace those abs. This is a, I would say this is one of the most challenging plank variations there are. All right, Isaac. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Exactly. So we always want to do things the best we can, not the best we can. Isaac's going extreme on when he's going down. And even if his eyes stop right there by his elbows, I'd be happy with that. Isaac's going about five inches past that. He's got extremely strong abs. He's 20 years old and he's really strong. That helps. In case you're wondering, Five more seconds. So again, if you're doing this at home, dish towel on wood floor or a slider on carpet works great. Isaac, you just hit it. Isaac, how would you describe that one? That was hard. That is very hard. It's called the body saw. Well, Isaac, we got five points in. Unless you want to give me another one. Um, and if you had 45 seconds, make do a death plank. What's a death plank? That's where you got. Two forty-five plates on your back. Hold for one minute. I take one of them off. You hold oh. for thirty seconds. Take yeah. the last one off. Another three. Yeah, that would be a deathly plank. Well, hey, we'll pretend we're going to do that one right right now. But in the meantime, give those five that you just saw a try. And uh, yeah, nice job if you did along with us. All right, my friends, we're to the point where we're going to get that cool down. If you can hear in that background, that's a lot more. I did that death plank guys was talking about with the weights on my back. That was awful. So I'm punishing him by making him mow the lawn. Hope that teaches him a lesson. Uh, we had a great day. We did. We had that long warm-up, which felt really good. I was so sore earlier. And I actually felt better ever since that point. Uh, we did that. Uh, we did the, uh, the ISOs. Those were hard, that was, but they were good. I felt, felt that made me feel better too. We got that uh, lunge series, that clock one. I like that one. Uh, we got the uh, uh, upper body agility with the, uh, with the hands. That was a lot of work for that upper body. And then Isaac was so kind as to do the plank thing until he wounded at the very end. Um, and anyway, he's mowing now. So we are gonna do a very short cool down to recover from that work purpose of that warm-up is getting muscles ready for action and the purpose of a cool down is just to help kind of get a get a little bit of blood flow move those uh, metabolites that we accumulate in our bloodstream when we do hard work like we did earlier and uh, I just kind of like it's a nice little uh, way to finish a really good workout so anyway our cool down is gonna be very closely related to our warm-up so I'm going to get up on my toes, up on my heels. Just a few of those. I'm going to do side to side on my feet. Really feel that ground with my feet. Inside pressure near my toes. Outside pressure near my pinkies. Back and forth, side to side, without going too far. Don't want to turn an ankle doing this. Okay. Uh, knee hugs. Earlier, when I was doing my first warm-up, I mentioned I like to do them pull up so hard I get up on my toes. I couldn't do it, I was so sore, and now I can do that. So that feels kind of nice. Okay, high knees. 
I couldn't jog or lift. All right, pulling that ankle a little bit. I don't want to crank on that, just a nice gentle pull. I was really sore there earlier, feel pretty good right now. Okay, butt kickers. All right, okay, a little side to side work. Back and forth. I don't want to be kind of herky jerky, I want it to be pretty smooth. Get a nice stretch on those inner thighs. Okay, I'm uh, gonna do that thing with the shoulders, thumbs up as high as I can go, thumbs down as far back as I can go. And do these up on the toes. All right, gonna go on the heels as much as I can. Go across my body. I'm try to pull up my toes, kind of hard. Remember, palms up, palms down. Alternate which arms over the top. We'll do five circles, like a big air guitar, forward and backwards. Same thing on this side. Feels really good. Gonna make a big figure eight on its side. Get a little side to side. Ah, three of those is fine. Check out my handwriting on this side. Try to make everything as much same to same as I can. All right. Uh, my friends, we had a great day. Hope you had fun. Hope you tried all this stuff. And we will see you next time. Enjoy the beautiful weather.